Hello again everyone, welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it not so ugly yet. Last week's video I said this could get ugly and I still believe it can and it will. It just hasn't done it yet. There are certain parameters we're looking for on our indicators and of course a completed five wave pattern down in the major indices. We don't have that yet. All right, so this video we're gonna talk about the NASDAQ composite the NASDAQ 100 ETF, the QQQ, the IMW, the Russell 2000 ETF. I want to look at one of the key indicators, the percent of stocks above their 200-day moving average in the NASDAQ. I want to show you a couple of interesting things there. Then we're going to check in on XLK, which is the S&P 500 technology ETF, the SOX index, which is the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, and then take a look at how AMD is acting. Is it doing anything different than some of these stocks I talked about last week? Post earnings. All right, so AMD had their earnings out, and we're going to take a look at that. So, and it was a couple of weeks ago, so we'll show you what's going on with that too. All right, so let's start off here. What we've got on the, on the, um, on the screen is the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ weekly shots, weekly views, and you can see that the, uh, you know, they're starting to roll over. You can see the 10-week moving average crossing the blue line, crossing below the 21-week. That really hasn't happened on all these major indices since March of 2020. Now, moving averages are lagging indicators. And it doesn't guarantee anything's happening. But the fact that it is the first time that something like this has happened is in about two years tells you that something different may be going on, and I believe it is. All right, we're going to talk about that. All right, so let's uh, let's go back to the home screen. I'm going to focus on the NASDAQ. Here's the NASDAQ composite. Here's the high, November 22nd, that occurred. And then here's the most recent low that occurred on January 24th. All the major indices, um, the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ, they all bottomed in terms of the low in January, on January 24th. It's interesting that the Russell 2000 didn't bottom until four days later. Uh, and we'll look at that. So, and let me look at the weekly view. On Friday, the NASDAQ was down, let's see, 169 and down 243 for the week. So that's the picture there. The Elliott Wave count that we've got on the NASDAQ is right here. Here's what I'm looking at. I believe that we've had four waves complete. We had really this, this second wave in here. We had the first wave down coming off that high in November. And uh, you look at my marker here. This is kind of a sideways type move. It looks at what we call an Elliott Wave uh, terminology, a flat, okay, a sideways type move. A, B, and C. Then we get this strong third wave down here. Let's see the gap, straight line type price action. And then we get this zigzag, which actually turned into a, a double zigzag in terms of what it was happening, what was happening in here with the pattern. It was a, a WXY for wave four. Um, and now we're in the fifth wave coming down. So we're looking for five waves down. The thing about fifth waves, they can morph into an ending diagonal pattern, or they can be your more traditional impulse wave, okay, with, with non-overlapping uh, five-wave structure to it. So we'll see what we get. My expectation is that we're going to come down and close below this uh, January 24th low. So I want to show you something back into 2007 and show you uh, the similarities and show you where I think we are based on where we're at right now and where that compares to the, um, the 2007 into 2008 uh, move down. Okay, so let me pull that in. I've got that right here. Okay, so here's the 2007 peak and I believe that was on October 31st. And so I just got done telling you that this, we peaked here on November, what was it? November 22nd. And back in 2007, it was on October 31st. Wave one, wave two, 
wave three, and then wave four, and then a fifth wave down right here that ended in March. It's really, really interesting. So based on, well, two things. This low right here, January 23rd. And when was our low? January 24th, right here. Pretty interesting. At the end of the third Manu wave, the third wave down in here, and again, this we're getting five waves down for the first minor wave, what I'm calling minor wave, okay? For like the, the terminology or the labeling may change in terms of degree, but the form is going to be the same. So we are in our third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave here. But at the end of this third wave, January 24th, pretty similar to what we're talking about right here with the move down and bottom to January 23rd. Then we had this what looks to me like a triangle pattern for a wave four that ended right here. What I did was I counted out the days and said, okay, we are 19 days after the January 24th low. Well, that's right in here. I can't remember, it's either this day or this day back in 2008, in, in February of 2008. And then we bought them just a few weeks later back over here in mid-March. And that was the end of the first wave down. Then we had the second wave back up and then the third wave that started down in summer. And of course, we all know what that led to into the fall of 2008. But this is in terms of a comparison, in terms of what I'm seeing coming off the high, this is very, very similar, and that's where I think we are as compared to 2007 coming off that peak. All right, so that's where we're at now. Let's take a look at the cues. We have a very um, similar pattern, very similar labeling with the NASDAQ 100. One, two, same kind of pattern. Really not seeing a whole lot different at all. Yeah, the numbers are different, but the same pattern is it's very, very similar. So again, the expectation, and did we bottom right here on the 24th? Yes. The expectation is a close below this and that we'll, we'll complete our fifth wave down here and then we'll get a bigger counter, some kind of a bigger counter reaction to be seen how it'll develop and maybe it'll take just a couple of months, we'll see. Okay, but there's more to go to the downside in here. Now the wave patterns on the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100 are different than the, the wave patterns on the Dow and the S&P 500, okay? Now let's take a look at the Russell 2000. Oh, by the way, I did want to mention where I've got this fifth wave down here, that is pretty much a target for me based on some Fibonacci relationships. I don't want to go into a lot of that detail right now. I do share that with my members, but if I had to say, what's your target for the end of this? It's 324. Now, the one thing I do want to mention, both for the NASDAQ and the, and the Qs, I forgot to talk about. We had a very strong wave three and, uh, and it somewhat extended, but it's, it was pretty much a normal length, I believe. And, uh, and, but just because we got this kind of move for wave three doesn't mean that we can't get an extended fifth wave. So this is like my initial target. And then we'll watch and see what kind of waveform are we getting as we unfold lower, right? And it goes, same thing goes for the NASDAQ composite. All right, still, let's take a look at that Russell. So here's the Russell 2000 ETF, IWM. It's really interesting. You can see this, this line right here, 209. You know, I had this on here. It's like I, I did kind of a best fit looking at where the lows were you know, the low right here, the low back here in July, and then, of course, we had these two lows. I think I keyed mostly off of this low and, and this low right here in December. It's really interesting how after we broke down below it on the pullback for wave four, it came almost exactly right up to it. What was the high here, if you look at it? The high 209.05. Very, very interesting. So now, again, we're looking for the fifth wave. Now, as opposed to what I just talked about with the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100, we do not have an extended wave three here on the Russell 2000. This is not an extended wave three. It is not a normal length wave three. So when I look at I look at wave one, I look at wave three down, these motive waves, one, three, and five, there's a high probability that this fifth wave could very well extend and be a, a lot longer, okay, than normal. 
So we need to be aware for that and watch out for that as the waves start to unfold here to the downside. So that's the picture. It's what we've got here on the, uh, and this isn't, I don't have this where I think a target is. It's just a, it's just a placeholder. Let's put it that way. It's just a placeholder right now. But I just told you where I, what I think could be happening with the fifth wave. All right, that is the Russell 2000. Let's take a look at um, one of the indicators for the NASDAQ, and I'm going to pull that up. Okay, this is the percent of stocks above their 200-day moving average for the NASDAQ, all right? So you can see where did this particular indicator peak back in February 10th. Where did the NASDAQ peak? November 22nd, okay? So this never confirmed the, the peak in the NASDAQ as it continued to punch to new highs. It just started trending down and trending down. And here's the 50% level. Here's where half the stocks on the NASDAQ are above their 200-day and half the stocks are below their 200-day. Well, when I've noticed that when you get this, and I, I do the same moving averages that I have, it's the, you know, the 10 EMA and the 21 uh, SMA, when that 21 seems to break down below that 50 level, that's telling you that there's a whole, there's kind of a, a big trend change has occurred. And of course, we're seeing that in what's happening with the NASDAQ. But the fact that we're down here in this level, 38%, is this extreme enough? Well, I've only got data back for about four years, but let, let me just scroll back and show what happened in March of 2000. Okay, of 2020, March of 2020. Look how we got down below the 20% level for a couple of weeks. December of 2018, down below the 20 level. So this is just one more indicator that you you know I put into the mix and look at and say, okay, is what is this telling me? Well, this is telling me it's not so ugly yet. Okay, you know it's not down here. So we're going to keep an eye on this and we watch it, we look at it. We look at all three of these. I look at for the S&P, the New York, and the NASDAQ. So we track these every day. All right, let's take a look at XLK, the technology, uh, S&P 500 technology ETF. Okay, here's the weekly view on XLK, down $2.45 here for the week. It looks to me like a potential head and shoulders top in here. And again, potential, because we need to have this come down, break this neckline right here. The low uh, this week, which was the week of January 23rd, you know, so that 24th, was 146.24. But the interesting thing about this, and you can see the divergence showing up on the RSI. The interesting thing, if we go to the daily view in here, and you look at the, the wave structure, this looks more like the S&P 500 wave structure and the Dow Jones Industrial wave structure I've talked about the last couple of weeks in that it looks like five waves down here, wave two for wave one, wave two back up. So like Manu wave one, Manu wave two, as opposed to what we just talked about with the NASDAQ composite. So I'm not sure why that is, but it definitely is more in sync with the Dow and the S&P 500 in the picture. And it doesn't matter, you know, so this is the technology. When we take a look at the, the uh, SOX index, which is the Philly Semiconductor Index, it's the same kind of picture coming off that high that occurred on January 4th. Okay, we have five waves down that bottom right here. A little bit later, though, this is interesting, a little more in sync with the Russell 2000 bottoming on the 28th. Then we get this wave two pull back right here. But in terms of one, two, that's the count we've got on the Dow and the S&P 500, as opposed to the NASDAQ uh, and the Russell 2000 that I just talked about. So uh, here's where we're at. We're kind of right. You know, if you look at on the semiconductor index, we're really at about the midpoint between this high that occurred on the 10th February and that January 28th low. So that's the picture with the socks. I'm expecting these lows not to hold, just like we've talked about. Okay, so semiconductors. Well, let's take a look at one of the ones that on my favorite list that I track and look at. Here's AMD. When did they have earnings out? Earnings came out right here on, uh, what is this, February 1st. 
February 1st, after the market closed on February 1st, big eruption, huge excitement. And, and the next morning it opened all the way up here, it comes back down and closes here. And then next day, a little bit less fall through. And then it started to rally for four days. And that was all she wrote. Okay. And so right now from the after more after uh, the ER, what I call ER peak price action, right here, and why does it just give it to me? There we go, 132.96, and then Friday we close at 113.83, down 14.4% from the post ER high that we, that occurred. Basically, what two, four, six days after the earnings were released. So this is kind of in sync with the story that I told last week and we talked about several of the stocks and I think maybe even the week before also. So you know, just you start to if you get a little follow through, it doesn't seem to last. And sometimes you don't even get much of any follow through past the first day at all. So right now, this is still this is very much in sync with what we've been talking about. A little bit different, though, than what I just showed you on the on the uh, the Sox index in that we, we've been one, two, and it looks like three, four, although this guy has a little bit of overlap going on here. But anyway, that's where we're at with AMD. The whole point I wanted to show and talk about was just the ER uh, picture and the post ER breakdown that seems to be happening a lot these days. So again, we're not so ugly yet, but I think we're gonna be getting there fairly soon. The next couple of weeks are gonna be really, really interesting. All right, if you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. You can see that right here. Not super clear. Let me pull this up. There we go, joehenches.net. Head on over there, check out the website, check out the membership. Everyone, have a great week. Remember, the market's closed on Monday for President's Day. Have a great week. Talk to you on the next video.